In this mini lecture, we're going to look at how to incorporate other people's work into your own text in a legitimate way. This is an essential skill in academic writing. Because you know, knowledge construction is a collective enterprise and individual scholars or scientists are expected to build upon the work of others that have gone before. Even the most hardcore empirical text will have a literature review or a state of the art section in which authors are expected to demonstrate their familiarity with related work. However, it's not always easy to know how to incorporate this material effectively. If you don't do it in an accepted way, you may, have, you may inadvertently find yourself committing plagiarism, the cardinal sin of academia. Plagiarism means using other people's words or ideas without proper acknowledgement. It's a form of academic dishonesty that in some universities is taken so seriously that it may be punished with expulsion or people committing it may be stripped of their degrees. Nowadays, student essays and journal submissions are routinely scanned for plagiarism using the various applications that exist for the purpose, such as Turnitin, Viper or Plague Track. Hence, if you're hoping to forge a successful academic career, it's extremely important that you know exactly how to incorporate sources in the proper way. There are basically three ways of doing this. Direct quotation, paraphrase and summarising. The first involves giving the exact words that the author wrote presented in inverted commas, if it is a short quote. Or indented in relation to the body of the text, if it is longer than three lines. By the way, in order to avoid committing self-plagiarism here, which is as serious as the regular sort of, of plagiarism in this era of copyright transfer, I should mention at this point that the two examples just given, like those that will come in a moment, were taken from my article, The Geopolitics of Academic Plagiarism, which we looked at in Lessons four, Lesson 4, and which is available on the site for download. In all forms of referencing, we should of course mention the work from which the quote was taken. The way in which this is done will depend upon the style convention adopted by the journal or the publishing house to which your text is being submitted. The referencing system used in these examples is called parenthetical referencing or the Harvard style and it involves giving the author's name, year of publication and page reference in brackets, with the full reference presented in the bibliography at the end of the text. Direct quotations are particularly common in humanities subjects, where the surface texture of the prose is considered to be significant. Using a direct quote thus implies that this f formulation is particularly felicitous or that the idea could not be expressed in any other way. However, in the sciences, where words are seen as merely containers of information, it's more common to use paraphrase or summarising techniques instead. The former involves reformulating the phrase so that you express the same idea in different words. The second, as the name suggests, is an abridged or a shortened version. Let's have a look at each of these in turn. Paraphrasing involves saying the same thing as the author does, but in different words. There are three examples in this extract, highlighted in bold.
You need to bear in mind that a paraphrase involves more than merely replacing the keywords with synonyms. Ideally, there will be some kind of reformulation on the grammatical level, such as occurs if we embed the author's words in an indirect speech structure, transform a sentence from the active to the passive or vice versa, or use a subordinating structure instead of a coordinating one. There are some examples of this in reference file 9. As for summarising, this involves expressing a claim in fewer words than the original author actually used. It may include reformulating a long sentence into a shorter one, encapsulating a paragraph in a single sentence, or even summing up the content of a whole text in a brief phrase, as in the examples shown here. This is particularly useful in literature review sections, where you often have to deal with a great many works in a limited amount of space. Note that in such encapsulations, it's not always necessary or even feasible to give page references. The author's name and the date of publication is usually enough. It can be very difficult for novice authors to know who to quote and how. And indeed, this is a skill that is probably best acquired over time by reading other people's work and seeing how they do it. However, the basic principle underlying all references is quite straightforward. The aim is to give credit to authors where credit is due, by acknowledging the originator of a fertile idea, theory or claim, and not trying to pass it off as your own. If you learn how to do this convincingly, it will ultimately serve you well. Your own ideas will be presented as building upon or deriving from what others have said or done before you. Like this, you are carving out a place for yourself in the community of discourse. And sooner or later, other authors may start to quote you too.